Greetings, I am Herbert Erbaderp, and today I'm going to build this Voroshilovitz tractor, which I am almost certainly saying incorrectly. This is a 172nd scale plastic kit from Trumpeter, and you can probably see why this thing appeals to me. It's quite odd and a bit silly looking, and that's right up my alley. Why have a half track when you can have a whole track? Anyway, there's nothing on the back of the box, so let's take a look at what's inside. Not really a whole lot, actually. The box says that there are 20 plus parts, but I don't think there's that much more than 20. Not that I'm complaining, of course. The main reason I chose to build this when I did was because it seemed like it would be pretty quick, simple, and fun to put together. And spoilers, it was. Anyway, while the parts count is limited, what is here does look pretty good. The parts are quite neat and well molded, and I wasn't able to find any glaringly obvious defects though as always there are mould lines. I wouldn't consider those defects though, more like just a fact of life if you're a modeler, I guess. They're not too bad in this kit and cleanup should be relatively quick and easy. The main body components don't come on a sprue, and they also look pretty good. The canvas cover for the rear of the vehicle is pretty nice, though initially I thought the corners were mismolded. It seems those gaps are to clear the latch things on the body, so that's fine. The lower hull is pretty nice. There's a couple of knobs you'll have to remove, but it's pretty well detailed considering that it's a single piece. Same for the tray or body or whatever you would call it. It's a single piece, but it has plenty of good detail. And here's the driver's cab. Again, a nicely detailed single piece. I will point out though, that the model on the front of the box has an open door, and clearly this part has the doors molded in place. If you want open doors, you're going to have to do some surgery, and I'm not sure it would really be worth the effort. Not unless you really wanted an open door. I'm fine with it closed. It looks good anyway. The tracks are, for some reason, moulded in a differently coloured plastic than the rest of the model. It seems like the same plastic, just a different colour. For single part track sets, these are fairly well detailed. I like them. And I think they're going to make assembling the tracks a breeze. Just don't forget to remove those little bits of sprue in the middle there. Instructions are obviously included. This is a pretty simple kit and you could probably muddle your way through it without the instructions, but I'd prefer they be there. And fortunately, they are. The diagrams here are good. They are not too complicated and are easy enough to follow. The final page has a couple of painting and marking guides and, as always, this kind of thing is basic, but it could be a good starting point if you need it. A small sheet of decals is included so you can apply some of those markings. Obviously, I don't know what else you're going to do with decals. There's not a whole lot here, but you don't really need much. And I'm sure most modelers who have been at it for a while might have a few other decals laying around if you want a Soviet star or something like that. So, now that we know what's in the box, Let's glue some bits of plastic to other bits of plastic. The instructions want track assembly to be the first thing we do, and who am I to disagree? This is pretty simple, as you might imagine. You glue the bogies into the inside of the track set. There are guide pins to help line everything up nice and neat. The bogie parts all had different numbers, but they look to be identical, so I'm not sure how much you have to worry about getting each bogie into the correct place, but as long as they're facing the right way around, I'm sure you'll be fine. That said, I did follow the instructions precisely here. It looks pretty good so far if you ask me. Next, we need to add the inner half of the drive sprocket. This is keyed so that the slots line up on both sides. And at the other end, idler wheels. These also have keying, but it's tiny and you might miss it, but it is there. I had to kajigger this around a little bit to get it to line up neatly, but that's not too difficult to do. I think you will agree that these tracks look very track. Well said, Herbert! Before we can attach those assemblies to the hull, we need to add some bits. Namely, these bracket bits that hold the inner part of some of the return rollers. These are very simple to install, though there is a little bit of play to them, so you may find you need to nudge them a bit to get them all to line up nice and straight. I then add the towing hook. This isn't necessary for attaching the tracks like the previous part, but if you want to tow stuff, and I think you do, you will need to install this part. As you can see, this is very easy. Now let's add tracks to the hull. There's a few points of contact for these, all little pins and sockets. 
I put glue on all of them, because if we don't, once we let go of the track set it's just going to fall right off again, and we don't really want that. The track sets more or less drop right into place, assuming you've got the inner return roller mounts lined up properly. If you don't, you should be able to nudge them a little bit so they go into place. That shouldn't be too tricky. I'm pretty happy with how this looks. It's quite nicely detailed, even though it barely took any effort to put together. Now it's time to add the truck bits, starting with the cab. There are tabs on the inside that guide this, though it might be slightly tricky to find the exact spot at first, but that's why we test fit before gluing. Once I find the correct spot, I add glue on the inside to avoid making too much mess with it, and I apply pressure so the part doesn't pop off. There's a bit of tension here, and I found it easy to bump it out of place. Next, I install the driver's controls, which as you might guess, is this set of levers. No steering wheel here, no sir. I use my knife to apply pressure to the base of the part, because I'm pretty sure pushing down on the levers would have a high chance of breaking them. Not something I really wanted to do, strangely enough. The cab comes next, and this is also very easy. The fit is a little bit tight, which isn't really a bad thing, it just means that you might need to apply some pressure so that it stays where you want it. There's another thing that you can see on the box that's not included with this kit, and that's window glazing. The instructions make no mention of this, so I'm pretty sure it's not a matter of a piece of glazing accidentally being left out of my particular kit. If you really wanted, you could add your own at this point. It's not something I was really worried about, so obviously I haven't. Onto the cab I glue this ridiculous side mirror. We had a sensible chuckle on stream about how silly this part looks, and it was also predicted that it would be broken off within minutes of completing the model. So far, it's still attached. For now. It was a little bit fiddly to position, but not that hard. You just need to do a bit of nudging. Next, I'm going to fill the big gap in the front with this radiator part, which is fortunate because that is the part that's meant to go there. It's easy to place, though you might need to apply some pressure to eliminate the gap that wants to form along the top. The headlamps come moulded into this part and not only is that convenient, but I think it looks pretty good as well. That's a big beefy looking radiator. I then add some mud guards, because you don't want to get too much mud all over the place. These mount into a little slot on the side of the hull, and there's a little bit of play to them, so you might need to nudge it a bit to get it to look right. Of course there is only a little bit of mudguard at the front and rear, which seems kind of odd, but I think it also looks quite interesting. It's probably a waste of materials to have a mudguard running the entire length of the vehicle. That's the sort of decadence a filthy capitalist pig dog would have. I then attach the truck bed. This is pretty simple being that it's a single piece. There's ribbing along the bottom of this part that will link into the slots on the frame, and that makes it hard to install the wrong way. Nice and simple, and the result looks pretty good. Oop, nearly broke that side mirror off. Not quiet though. The final step is to add the canvas cover, which comes complete with some windows. Though, like the cab, there's no window glazing included, though it is depicted on the box. Oh well. This part more or less drops right into place, though to make painting easier I've left it unglued. I suppose this would also make it easy to add infantry figures or maybe a cargo load inside as well, though I don't think I'll do that. The cover could also be left off if you prefer, and if you wanted to be extra fancy, you could even model framing for the cover with some wire. I'm not going to be fancy though, so that's it. The Voroshilovitz tractor in 172nd scale by Trumpeter is now completed. I'm pretty pleased with this. It's a weird looking vehicle, and I do mean that in a complimentary way. It looks cool, and in my opinion the model has turned out very nicely. It was pretty cheap, and the low parts count did initially lead me to think that this might not be the best model, but I was wrong in that assessment. And I'm definitely not upset about that. Quite the opposite, unsurprisingly. I mean, who's going to be upset when something's better than they expected? Weirdos, that's who. Of course, my initial expectation of a quick and fairly simple to build kit was spot on, so I wasn't totally wrong. Most of the parts pretty much drop right into place, and those that don't only needed a little bit of gentle pressure. Some cleanup of mould lines and such was required of course, but it was minimal and didn't take up too much of my time. And the detailing is quite nice. I'm obviously no Voroshilovitz tractor surgeon, so I'm not going to pretend as if I know it's 100% accurate or not, but it looks the part to me. 
I'm sure there are some simplifications of detail here and there, but that's just something that happens when models are designed. I'm sure I've waffled enough about that kind of thing in the past. The main point is, this is a rather nice little model of a very interesting and fun subject, and it should paint up to look very nice indeed. It also has the added bonus of not costing too much money at all. I'm actually considering painting this model soon. Not super soon, so don't go holding your breath, but I think it's going to be fun. It's probably about time I did something that's not a silly paint scheme. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, it would be great to see those in the comment section below. If you've built one of these or any other cool models and you want to share, why not drop by our Discord community and post some pics? We'd love to see what you've done. If you'd like to watch me build kits like this live, head on over to my Twitch channel, the link for which is in the description. And if you've not already done so, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch. Links to all of my things are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.